six weeks into my indoor biochar trial, and the grow room is bursting at the seams. It's getting to the point where the plants are too crowded for their own good. Fortunately, it's warming up enough outside that I can begin the process of transplanting the kale and collard greens into the garden, which will give the tomatoes and peppers the extra room they need. But before transplanting, I first needed to close out the indoor biochar trial for the kale and collards. We already concluded that biochar had no impact on their germination rates, but I still needed to assess their size. So this weekend I took a variety of measurements to determine if the data support the hypothesis that adding biochar to a potting mix at a rate of 5-10% to will result in larger plant growth. For each plant, I took the following measurements. The thickness of the stem should be a good indication of plant size, so I measured the width of each plant's stem just above the soil line. When plants are grown under proper lighting, another good indication of plant size is height. I measured each plant from the soil level to the top of the canopy. As important as stem thickness and plant height are, with collars and kale it's really all about the leaves, so I measured both the width and length of the leaves. I only measured the leaves that had branched off from the stem so leaves like these were measured, but these were not. I measured the width at the widest part of the leaf and the length from the point the leaf originated to its tip. I recorded the total leaf width and total leaf length for each plant. I also counted and recorded the number of leaves on each plant. Again, only leaves that had branched off from the stem were counted. This should also be a good indicator of plant size and will enable me to determine average leaf width and length. I made all the measurements in millimeters and recorded the data in Excel spreadsheets. So after six weeks of waiting, the results are in for the kale and collards. The kale results are consistent with the hypothesis that adding biochar to a potting mix at a rate of five to 10% will result in larger plant growth. In fact, by every measure, the plants grown in the 5% biochar group were larger than the control plants. Their stems were 14.29% thicker, they were 4.31% taller, their total leaf width per plant was 1.06% greater, and their total leaf length per plant was 4.77% greater. And the 10% biochar plants were even more impressive when compared to the control. Their stems were 14.29% thicker, they were 5.69% taller, their total leaf width per plant was 23.74% greater, and their total leaf length per plant was 31.62% greater. So the results for the kale are perfectly consistent with the hypothesis. Now we'll move on to the collards. Prior to this weekend, the only size assessment I had made of the collards was three weeks ago and based on casual observation. At that time, the largest collard green plant, according to my casual observation, was from the 5% biochar group. Since that time, however, things have changed. It turns out that the results for the collards aren't consistent with our hypothesis at all. In fact, the largest collards were from the control group, and the collards in the 5% biochar group were the smallest. The 5% biochar collards were smaller than the control on all of these measures. Their stems were 25.64% thinner, they were 11.13% shorter, their total leaf width per plant was 34.6% less, and their total leaf length per plant was 33.09% less. The 10% biochar collards were larger than the 5% group, but still smaller than their control. Compared to the control, their stems were 14.1% thinner, they were 1.46% shorter, their total leaf width per plant was 21.6% less, and their total leaf length per plant was 14.29% less. I must admit I was surprised to see such a difference between the kale and collards. Because both are brassicas, I really expected to see similar results. In addition, they were planted on the same day and in the same potting mixes. They were both bottom watered to ensure unbiased watering. They were also randomly assigned their positions under the lights and randomly reassigned every weekend. So I don't have an explanation for the very different results. These results call for further study. So I plan to repeat the test this summer when I start kale and collards for the fall and winter garden. 
There isn't much left to do in the indoor biochar trial. I just need to measure the tomatoes and peppers and summarize my findings. It'll be interesting to see if the data for the tomatoes and peppers support our hypothesis or not. With the indoor trial winding down, I'll be turning my attention to this summer's biochar and rock dust field trials. A number of you have expressed an interest in these trials, and I'd like to thank all of you who plan on participating or following the trials this summer. If you'd like to learn more about the trials, please see the link to the Home Garden Field Trials G Plus community in the description below. Well, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, remember, you can change the world one yard at a time.